like to think you would not color your hair tips around anyone else, even after all this time. In a mustard sweater and knee-high socks tucked into Converse, you were effortlessly nonchalant, and I swallowed my laugh to turn it into yours. You rest the needle on the disc so there's space between concentric circles for panic attacks and crumpled Ziploc bags. But even as you turn your back to water the rosemary, I stare at the needle bobbing in its groove, tracing circles like seawater ripples. You were a blinding catastrophe and I wanted to be consumed in circles around you. When I couldn't be myself, when your fingertips grew rigid, when I laid your body across my bed like a tapestry, I whispered to you of the birth of polyphony, how church musicians could see nothing but their own breath on the page and the space stretching from their fingers to Bethlehem and the end crawling closer and closer and closer and then notes were stacked vertically forgot to stop counting. So time sat up and started walking again. It was only during these times that your features slid across your little face like molten wax. And I tried to remember you by the pictures. What I do remember is the sliced apples and peanut butter. I tell you, the evening will never outrun us, but if it does, we will drag our tired toes down the hallway, flying past vertical fluorescent lines and peeling wallpaper to the light pulsing where our bedrooms ended and find the needle where we left it. The rosemary wilted. The Ziploc bags long gone. When your mother finally came in the late afternoon with wide set hips, red moving cards. I sat in the hallway with the one third of us that was left and cried as I peeled my fingertips next to the wallpaper because I had never had something like this. over and there is no more blue light between us. Your hair is already purple. It suits you well. <laughs>